Compressor. Compressor takes low pressure gas, compresses it to high pressure gas, is the heart of the system. The high pressure gas goes to the muffler. The muffler has a number of baffles inside of it that create expansion chambers to smooth out the pulses of the high pressure gas. The muffler is not used primarily for noise. The muffler is used for pulsation smoothing. We go to the oil separator. There are two types of oil separators. Type number one is a helical style that has an internal vortex that causes the refrigerant to spin inside. The heavier oil molecules are thrown against the outside of the oil separator where they slide down along the walls and accumulate in the bottom. The oil separator has an oil return flow valve in it. When the oil builds up, the high side pressure pushing down on the level of the oil with the float valve open will force the oil back to the low pressure side of the compressor. The other style of oil separator is called an impingement style. Uses a series of metal screens on the inlet and outlet. The concept is that the hot high pressure gas with oil in it strikes the screens, the oil condenses onto the screens and falls off to the bottom of the tank in the little oil receiving area and then the oil is returned back to the compressor via the same type of oil flow valve. Leaving the oil separator, we then go to the condenser. There is indeed a T at that point between the oil separator and the condenser that goes to hot gas. We will come back and address that later. Condenser removes latent and sensible heat takes high pressure gas, turns it into high pressure liquid. At the end of the condenser we actually decrease the temperature of this liquid and it comes out as subcooled liquid. Liquid then travels to the receiver tank. The receiver tank is a liquid storage device that stores the liquid refrigerant until it's called for and needed by the refrigerant controls. On the outlet of the receiver tank, generally welded directly to it, is the liquid receiver service valve or king valve. The liquid receiver service valve or king valve will allow us to do three functions. Number one, it will allow you to charge on the high side with liquid with the system running if you know exactly what you're doing. If you don't, you will die. Number two, it allows us to shut off all flow of refrigerant leaving the, can, the receiver tank. So nothing can leave the receiver tank. Let me call that pump down. And number three, it allows us access for our gauges to take system pressures. Make sure when you do your drawing that the receiver has the king valve firmly attached to it. It's not off in space somewhere. On the receiver tank is a small little part called a PRV. It's a pressure relief valve. There are three types of pressure relief valves. One is made out of solder that blows one time when the pressure or temperature gets too hot. Another type of pressure relief valve is a carbon disc. It blows at about 17, 16 pounds, found on chillers. It allows all refrigerant to blow out of the chiller. The last type of pressure relief valve is the same type you have on your water heater at home. It's a spring-operated ball-type check valve that when the pressure exceeds the spring range, the valve spits out pressure. But as soon as the pressure is relieved, it resets itself. So you have a spring-resettable pressure relief valve. Spring resettable, carbon disc, and solder.
leaving the receiver tank. We may come to a part, I'm going to call it a vibration dampener. It can go anywhere in the system. It could also be called a vibration eliminator. It is a flexible part that absorbs any vibration and stops the lines from cracking. Vibration will cause cracks in the lines. The vibration eliminator's job is to absorb the vibration and stop refrigerant lines from cracking. And it can be located anywhere in the system. Next I'm going to go to the filter dryer. The filter's dryer job is to remove solid particulate matter, or crud, and moisture. The filter dryer has a desiccant inside of it. The standard desiccants are charcoal, activated alumina, or silica gel. And there is another one I forget to name. It's in your book on the last chapter under technical characteristics. They give you a, a fourth one. Now, molecular sieve, but there's another one on top of that, too. I believe it's like a methyl chloride or something. But it's in the back in the technical characteristics chapter. The desiccants will either absorb or adsorb the moisture. In any case, no moisture should ever be allowed to leave the filter dryer. Inside the filter dryer is also a, a uh, group of screens or fibrous material to filter out the solid impurities. Leaving the filter dryer, we go to, oh, last thing I should say, the filter dryer is to be replaced whenever the system is open for repairs. The system had been open for repairs or the system had a leak, the filter dryer must be replaced. The filter dryer's job is to clean the new refrigerant, not your fallops. You don't put it in as an insurance policy. You install a filter dryer on every repair to clean the new refrigerant to make sure you don't have any moisture in the system at all. Sight glass. Sight glass is a viewing device. It can tell us three functions. Number one, if there is a moisture indicator in it, the moisture indicator will tell us if we have moisture in the system. Generally, green is good. The system is dry, has no moisture. Yellow means that the system has got moisture in it. A brown color indicates there was a burnout and the acid has destroyed the crystals and the tech was too lazy to replace the moisture indicator by replacing the sight glass. The sight glass will also show bubbles in the system after it's been running for a few minutes. If we see bubbles or the sight glass only appears partially full, it's an indication that we may be undercharged, not have enough refrigerant in the system. It is possible sometimes to detect non-condensable gases in a system because you will have bubbles go through the sight glass. Your pressures will be higher than normal on the high side because you cannot condense the gas and so you can see bubbles in the sight glass and those bubbles could be non-condensable gases. That's why I say it could be low on charge. Overwhelmingly that's true. You might occasionally run a system where the bubbles were created by non-condensable gases. Air, a different refrigerant that's used in the system, Somebody screwed up and left nitrogen in it, left CO2 in it when they were purging. We don't know. 